So there's one player on the Bills roster that's been getting an incredible amount of buzz here lately, and rightfully so. And that's third-year wide receiver out of Oregon State, Isaiah Hodgins. Isaiah Hodgins has been, for all intents and purposes, having himself a pretty good uh, training camp so far. And I think a lot of the buzz came off of the tail end of the Indianapolis Colts game, uh, the preseason matchup that was uh, last weekend. We saw flashes from Isaiah Hodgins. We saw a performance from Isaiah Hodgins. Granted, it was against, it was in the preseason, but we saw, we saw what we've seen out of him coming out of college, right? And we all understand that Isaiah Hodgins coming into the league um, so far with the Bills has had a just a has just been very very unfortunate, right? Just a bad stretch of, of of injuries that's really kept him off of the field throughout his entire early career so far with the Buffalo Bills. But he's finally getting himself healthy, and we're seeing some of the things that that we liked out of him when we saw him coming out of college, and some even at the time thought that he was a better prospect than budding star wide receiver Gabe Davis, who I absolutely love. You guys know I am a Gabe Davis stan. But Isaiah Hodgins has been coming on lately. And he has the traits, he has the tools. We all we we knew it. Maybe it's recency bias, right? I mean, since he's been injured so long, we don't we've kind of forgotten his play his his profile. But coming out of college, the guy has been um, he was touted to have incredible hands, right? uh, 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 a high catch point kind of guy, um, sneaky route runner, sneaky route runner, and he's a bigger target. Not as big as Gabe Davis, obviously, but he is still about 6'3", 6'4", um, about 2'10". So he has some size to him, but he has great hands and is a pretty good route runner, route runner for a guy his size. But we just hadn't seen a whole lot of him because he's he's unfortunately been injured every year since being in the National Football League. But now he's finally getting his groove back, so to speak, and he's getting, he's getting healthy. And we're starting to see him in camp uh, um, do some things that are kind of wowing a lot of people. And, in fact, he's even taken some first-team reps, though, here, here in, in, in camp as well. So it looks like, you know, Isaiah Hodgins is finding himself finally on the right side of a training camp battle for a roster spot. Now, of course, it really depends on 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 what the Bills decide to do at that position, how many wide receivers they, they intend to carry um, at that position. But needless to say, I think by and large, we can all agree that it's looking like it's coming down to him or maybe even Jake Kumaro, who's been on the you know on the squad for a while, but has been a, a special teams specialist, right? An ace for uh, the past uh, few years. But Isaiah, Isaiah Hodgins is not going away quietly. He's not. Now, he's making his case to finally um, be on the 53-man roster and, and, and really uh, solidify himself um, in that wide receiver room. But, you know, um, looking at, 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 at Isaiah Hodgins, um, granted, it's just a small sample size, right, of what we've seen so far in preseason, nonetheless, um, and throughout camp. But what really kind of struck me, and I guess I, I just had this random thought because I was just thinking about some things, and um, I made a post on Twitter, and um, you know it's it's kind of it's kind of sparked a little bit of controversy. People are acting kind of crazy on it, but it's all good. That's, I mean that, that's to be expected, right? It's Twitter, and I made this post and I said this. I said if Isaiah Hodgins secures a roster spot, could it be insurance for being in McDermott? in the event that Gabe Davis prices himself out of Buffalo once his contract is up after the 2023 NFL season? I think that's a fair question to ask, right? Um, if Isaiah Hodgins finally makes the 53-man roster, could it be insurance, right? Because, you look, you, this is what you have to think about. Um, and in and, and, and no way am I saying that I want Isaiah Hodgins over Gabe Davis. You got to be kidding me. For the people who are on, on here who, who are hitting me up, talking about, yo, uh, uh, Hodgins is, is, you know, uh, basically saying that, that, that Gabe Davis is better and, 
and this and that and the third and, and you know and all that kind of, look 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 obviously obviously I told you before at the top of this that I am a huge Gabe Davis stan love Gabe Davis love him on thousand percent love him but it's apparently people are kind of missing the point here or they're not reading and uh I had somebody talk about, you know, it, you know, just just ridiculous, right? Just ridiculous. And this just goes to show the, the level of reading comprehension that people have. Um, uh, <laughs> reply talking about, yo, zero catches, zero yards, zero touchdowns, four snaps played. Well, obviously, obviously, Mr. Obvious, you completely missed the point. I am in no means, in no way, saying Isaiah Hodgins is better than Gabe Davis, or that we should choose Isaiah Hodgins over Gabe Davis. That's ridiculous. Missed the point <laughs> to be expected. You know what I'm saying? The point that I'm making, and, and, and somebody uh, finally like, like understood the point. They said, I think the point is that you know uh, one would be more affordable than the other. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. That's the entire point of the tweet. <laughs> it has nothing to do with who I think is better or who, you know, uh, do I want one over the other or no. Or one has, has had, you know, zero production over. The, come on, man. I'm talking about specifically, I'm talking about the dollars, the contract. Both were drafted in the same year, 2020. Both are entering year three of their contract, their, of the rookie contract. One has had pretty good production over the, over the course of his career. The other has had zero production due to injury, but is making a case to be on the 53-man roster. The raw receiver room is, is deep. It is loaded. Okay? If, did you guys miss that word? If. <laughs> Man, it's crazy how people can just overread stuff. If, selective reading. If Hodgins makes the roster. It's a fair question to ask. Is it insurance? We look at the con we look at the guys that we have right now at the wide receiver room. We got Stephon Diggs, Gabe Davis, right? Isaiah McKenzie, Jamison Crowder, Khalil Shakir, who's 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 in the future, right? Uh, I think we can all agree that Isaiah McKenzie and Jamison Crowder likely won't be here beyond um, this season. I'd be shocked if if, the, if both of them um, are here beyond this season. So that leaves us with Diggs, Davis, Shakir, Hodgins. And let's just assume, let's just say, let's, let's just say for argument's sake that, that McKenzie is here. All right. This is what we have to look at. Because Brandon Bean, no doubt, has already taken a look at it. This is the point that I'm making. It's all about dollars. Not about talent, not about who I prefer or who I like. No, no, no. The dollars. The dollars. Because we have to take into account the contracts that are coming due. <laughs> All like at the same time. Okay? Let's just take a look at this. Number one, let's look at Stefan Diggs. Okay? Stefan Diggs right now, we know, he, we know he got an extension. Okay? But Stefan Diggs right now at the age of 29 this year, Stefan Diggs currently has a cap hit of $11.7 million, okay? But after this year, and starting in 2023, throughout the rest of his contract, he has a cap hit of over $20 million each year. 20 mil in 23, 26 mil in 24, 26 mil in 25, 27 mil in 26, and 21 mil in 27, with the potential out in 2025, okay? And his dead cap, you don't want to get rid of him. His dead cap is high, right? Dead cap is high. Uh, this year, $56 million dead cap hit. Next year, $45 million dead cap hit. 24, $25.7 million dead cap hit. This is ridiculous. Get, uh, uh, Diggs is going to be on the roster, right, for a while. But he has a hit of $20 million per year. And some starting in 2023. You got to take that into account. Okay. But now let's look at some other players whose contracts are set to expire at the end of this year. 
Number one, Tremaine Edmonds. Tremaine Edmonds. Now, granted, look, look, I know that that there's going to be a lot of new money coming in right to the NFL with these TV deals, et cetera. But, you know, money doesn't grow on trees. OK, if it did, Jordan Poor would be extended today. It's not happening right now. OK, money does not grow on trees. There's a cap that they have to fit all these players under. We uh, we all can agree that as much as we love all these players, not everybody's going to be with the team long term. It's just not going to happen. You can't sign everybody. We have to understand that. With Tremaine Edmonds on his fifth year um, uh, extension right now, right? He's coming due at the end of this year. And get this. Tremaine Edmonds, according to Track, Tremaine Edmonds has a market value, a market value average annual salary of $13.8 million. Okay. They've, 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 they've put his market value at four years, $55 million contract, right? Averaging sixth in the National Football League amongst inside linebackers right now. $13.8 million average annual salary for Tremaine Edmonds. That's number one. And remember, that's after the end of this year. Number two. Number two. It is Ed Oliver. Ed Oliver. Again, another guy who uh, Brandon Bean um, extended. You know what I'm saying? I mean, did his, his, uh, his fifth year um, extension, right? So we're looking at him coming due at the end of this season. I mean, at the end of, of, the, of the 23 season. Mind you, I'm sorry. Excuse me. The end of the 23 season. So a year out from now. And what Spot Track currently has his contract at a market value, four years, $59.4 million, with an average annual salary of $14.8 million, okay, which ranks him ninth amongst defensive tackles in the National Football League, okay? Um, it's a lot of money, guys. That's a lot of money. That is a lot of money. Okay, now granted, those two contracts are a year apart, but you still have to account for them, right? You still have to, you have, you still have to account, account for them. The next guy on the list is on the offensive side of the ball, okay? And this contract is set to expire at the end of this year, and that is tight end Dawson Knox. Tight end Dawson Knox. According to Spot Track, he has an average annual salary of $12.3 million, a market value contract of four year, $49.3 million, ranking him seventh. Seventh. Seventh amongst all tight ends in the National Football League at that contract. Okay? So we have to consider this. We've got Stefan Diggs. With a big, a big contract right now. Stephon Diggs is carrying a lot of cap. Okay. And he's going to for the rest, throughout the duration of his contract. $26 million. I mean, I mean, $20 million on 23. Okay. 26 and 24. Tremaine Edmonds coming due at the end of this year. If he gets extended, if he gets signed, guess what? According to Spot Track, you're looking at 13.8 million average annual salary. Now, of course, we don't know what that what the cap hit is going to look like, but we're just talking about average annual salary here, okay? Ed Oliver, the year I mean, I mean, I'm sorry, not Ed Oliver. Let me wait. Let me let me wait for him. Dawson Knox, same thing, 12.3 mil, okay. And then the year prior, I mean, the year after, he got Ed Oliver, uh, whose contract, according to Spot Track, is 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 larger than Jermaine Edmonds at 14.8 mil, okay? So. Now, you look at Gabe Davis. Gabe Davis, again, I, I love him. I love him. But his current market value by spot track is three years, $26.3 million. Okay? You say, well, that, that, you know, we could probably carry that. Average annual salary of $8.7 million. Currently, right now. Things could change. Especially this year. If Gabe Davis has himself a monster year like I expect him to have 
you can best believe that these numbers right here that Spontrack currently has are going to go through the roof. The roof. I almost said the moon. Go through the roof. Okay? So we have to consider this. And that's my point. That's my point. Is if it comes down to, to dollars and Isaiah Halgens actually makes the roster and you've got a monster contract in Tremaine Edmonds, you've got a mo another monster contract in Dawson Knox, with another monster contract coming up the year after that in Ed Oliver, plus the huge cap hit from Stephon Diggs, not even factoring in Josh Allen's monster cap hit. And let's just take a look at Josh Allen's cap hit after this year, okay? Josh Allen's contract, uh, his cap hit, let me see here, after this year is huge, okay? It's humongous. In 23, his cap hit jumps all the way up to $39 million, <laughs> okay? So, if Gabe Davis, Gabe Davis has the year that we expect him to have, he's going to want to get paid, and rightfully so. And I want Gabe Davis on this team for the long haul, okay? But we have to take into consideration the money side of it, okay? Is there going to be enough money in the banana stand, so to speak, to pay Gabe top dollar or to pay him market value, I should say, in addition to paying Jermaine Edmonds plus Dawson Knox and then Ed Oliver the year after that, plus having enough room to absorb Stephon Diggs's cap hit of, of, over, of over $20 million and then Josh's monster cap hit of almost $40 million. We have to consider this. Which is why I, I asked the question, if Isaiah Hodgins makes a 53, is this potentially insurance for McDermott and Brandon Bean in the event that Gabe Davis just prices himself out of Buffalo. If, his, if, if he has a monster year and he's asking and his market value is up there and we just can't afford it, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? You have to have insurance, right? I'm not saying that Isaiah Hodgins is better than they Gabe Davis, but at the end of the day, it just comes down to money. You know what I'm saying? Can they afford the contract? That's all this is about, man. That's all this is about. This is it. I love them both, man. When Isaiah Hodgins came out of college, I, lo I loved him, man. I, I really did. Um, it's, just, it's just been unfortunate for him that, that he's just been injured. But now we're starting to see him flash because he's getting healthy. We shall see. We shall see what happens. Okay. So just take, just take that into consideration. When we're talking about Isaiah Hodgins and Gabe Davis and all these other guys that are set to make some money, just remember that if Brandon Bean is going to be able to afford all of these high average annual salary contracts. Until next time, baby. Go Bills. <laughs> <laughs>